Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of the Wheat Podcast, where we delve into conversations that you might be wondering and pondering about and wondering, guy, hey, what, what is that? What is that like? That is essentially why I created this space to just discuss things that you could be having in your mind and wondering more about them. So we go deeper into um, those issues or things. So one of the things that um, I know there are people who may be wondering about, and this is especially for re pregnancy related content, is what it's been like being pregnant compared to the first time. So this is my second time being pregnant, especially this far. The first, I would say, I, I want to compare the two pregnancies. I, the first one I had with my son and then this time. Those who followed me for a while know that the very, very first pregnancy, I had a miscarriage. But now for the purpose of this conversation, I'm just comparing pregnancy number one and number one being me be pregnant with my firstborn, Rwani, and then me being pregnant this time round. So if you've been curious with how that journey has been compared to the first time, Maybe this is for you and please share it with someone who may be considering how does the second time round feel? Yeah. So if I look at both pregnancies, I have been sick the first four months. I've had hyperemesis. We've discussed hyperemesis, I think, in episode one and in one of the episodes that we're going to do with our gyna. Um, I've had hyperemesis. The difference is that the first time... I didn't know what that was. I didn't know it's just not morning sickness. Like I was really sick. In fact, if I compare the first time I was sicker than this, this second time, it's just that this second time round, I was aware that it is a condition. So my first time I used to vomit even three times a day. Like I could not comprehend what was happening and being a beginner or a first timer, you're really clueless. You feel like your body is just under attack. Like, what is this? <laughs> Literally, you ask, what is that? So the difference is that I am more aware in the, the second time. Um, and especially the fact that I had therapy this second time, I was aware that it is a condition. And I was aware that it can go all the way to nine months or it can end. So I was hoping that similarly with the first one, it would end. So I would say that I have had hypermesis in both pregnancies, but I was a more aware in pregnancy number two, which made it a bit easier to surrender to the process, just accepting it, that it it, will, it is happening and it, it's going to end at some point. So yeah, that's a major difference. Number two is I have struggled with anxiety in both pregnancy, uh, pregnancies. I have been anxious about making it all the way, anxious about especially passing the first trimester. Once you go through a miscarriage, that anxiety kind of, sneaks back in every time you're pregnant, especially in the weeks that you lost the pregnancy. So if I lost the, the pregnancy at week seven in the very first pregnancy, week seven tends to be my most anxious one in recurring pregnancies. So I have struggled with anxiety in both um, pregnancies. Just because you carry the first one to term, it doesn't mean the anxiety now goes away. It's just that... In this second one, I have not let the anxiety stop me or hold me back. I have felt the anxiety, spoken hope about it, and still did things that I needed to do. So if I needed, like I felt really convicted to share or create pregnancy content, I did it. But in the first one, I was very restricted by my anxiety with, no, I don't want to do this. I'm too scared to do this. But this time I've felt the fear, embraced it, spoken more hope for myself, and still did the things that I needed to do. Then 
with preg number three, which is with pregnancy number one, I was definitely sicker <laughs> with no clue what was happening. I've already said the hyperemesis was worse, though it didn't get me to the uh, admission stage just because I was not aware what was happening enough to take myself to hospital. And then there was COVID. For you to go to a hospital, it was a whole procedure of admission, which then mentally I was not ready for. But at hindsight, I was sicker in that pregnancy because I had an appendectomy at 26 weeks, the second trimester when my appendix decided <laughs> it's going to burst or going to leave my body. And it made it more challenging. So you're sicker in your first trimester, you get a few breaks in the second, and then you have a major surgery, which if you have watched my previous videos, the healing was brutal. It was very brutal. So even this time when I got to 26 weeks, I was like so anxious. But my therapy kept therapist kept saying, remember your appendix is gone. <laughs> You're not losing another one. So it is okay to be anxious, but speak hope. It's not going to happen again. So it was more challenging my first time just because of the stages. By the time I was fully healing from the appendectomy, I was in my third trimester. Um, that's when the doctor now said I'm out of danger, like week 34, 35. So it was a really hard journey just because I was sicker. Um, with this pregnancy, I have been able to be more active um, and I'm aware that life changes after the baby. Like, I think with your first pregnancy, you really don't know what to expect postpartum. So everything catches you off guard or you're a bit easier or gentle with yourself. So, but with this one, once I was able to be a little bit active, I have been as active as I could be with my work, with my social life, just because I am aware that it's going to slow down again after the baby comes. In comparison with number one, I was very gentle, very scared of doing things, very gentle with myself. I would not show up if I don't need to show up. Like I was, you're like an egg. I was taking care of myself extra, not even knowing that it's going to get harder after the baby comes because then you have to adjust to taking care of yourself plus taking care of a little a little human being. In that pregnancy, I was more on survival mode. So even after the baby came, I was my mind was not like I have a baby. It's just fukes, the pregnancy is over. Yet there was a new challenge. So my point is this one, I've been able to be a bit active just from the point of being aware that it's postpartum can be really difficult. In fact, I have traveled for a wedding at 34 weeks pregnant. And that is something I would not have done in my first one. There was a wedding I know I even missed because I was too scared of traveling or putting myself in such a situation. With this one, it's like my mantra is kaende, kaende. <laughs> I've really stayed active or tried to just do the things I need to do before we get to the time that we need to rest. Um, with this pregnancy, I have to admit on the negative side, I have not been on track with my appointments and supplements as much as I was in my first. So in my first pregnancy, I was in a, on a lot of medication just to support the pregnancy, a lot of hormonal medication, Dufaston, you name it, do, the Sustain, those things that were I was given to sustain the pregnancy, and I took them diligently despite the brutal side effects. This time round... Um, I don't know whether it's something in my mind, but I've been a bit, I was a bit uh, casual with the medications that I had, especially in my first trimester. If they made me sicker, I would not take them. I would skip days. And um, I'm not saying this to encourage anyone. I'm just saying this to say that I've really struggled, especially with medication and going for appointments. And I think it also come from, come, comes from a point of anxiety or just because I've been mentally busy, life passes me. So I've been, it's on a negative aspect. Yeah, kinda. I've been less on track this time than I was with the first one. I don't know if it's such a good thing 
or sometimes I've also just learned to listen to my body. Do I need to take the supplements today? Did I eat well today? If it's going to make me sicker, I'm definitely going to avoid it. Yeah. Then another thing that I have been able to do or not to do is remain physically as active as the first time. Now, the funny thing is that I was sicker the first time I was pregnant, but I was more, I was very active. I used to take walks. It's really made my mental health better to just take walks. I used to walk at least seven, six to seven kilometers every day in my first trimester, especially, and then sometimes in the second, slowed down in the third, and I would swim a lot. Now, in comparison to this time, I don't know, this time walking has been a challenge. I personally decided to listen to my body. Am I tired? Yeah, I've not really pushed myself as hard as I did in the first time, first round. I've also had a lot of pelvic pain and pressure, which has made walking a nightmare. So that's probably why I've not been as physically fit. Then I envisioned that I would swim a lot. In my first pregnancy, I swam, especially in the third trimester. I've not been able to do that partially because I cannot stand the smell of chlorine anymore. And this is something I really loved before I got pregnant. So in terms of physical activity, this time it's been a bit slower and it, it probably has come with lots of changes, which brings me to number the next point, that the second pregnancy feels very heavy, heavier on your body, because you're not also starting from the same weight point that you did. Probably you were less heavy the first time, and now you are a bit heavier the second time. So everything feels heavy. And then I don't know, it's because now I'm in my 30s, and then I was in my 20s. Bones don't feel as strong as they used to. <laughs> Everything is just shifty, and it has made physical activity a bit of a challenge. So I've slowed down, not completely because I've done some yoga and I've done some home exercises, but not as much as I did in the first time. Another difference between the two pregnancies is I've had physiotherapy with my second right from week 13 when the sciatica pain started and I went for physio. With the first time, with all the body changes and uneasiness, I did not know about physiotherapy. So I knew about physiotherapy after having a C-section. You have backaches, you're trying to lose weight. And then I ended up in a gym that had a physiotherapist and I was told to see the physiotherapist first before you work out. So on seeing her, I learned about so many changes that pregnancy brought to my body that you're not just supposed to work out like everyone works out. If you're working on your stomach, they, uh, there are exercises tailored for you to work on them without uh, that, that a normal or regular person who's not gone through maybe a C-section would have been prescribed for. So physiotherapy after the first pregnancy opened up my mind to a lot of changes that women go through physically when carrying life and even after breastfeeding, ETC. So it made me more aware. And this time round, I've been able to start it early to deal with the body changes and pains that come with carrying pregnancy. So I would say that if I didn't go for physiotherapy, I would not walk as much as I can right now because of the pain, the nerve pain. We were able to start treating it early, deal with it early. Like if you are pregnant, I advise you, go for physiotherapy. And especially if you have a C-section. C-section is a major surgery, especially dealing with your muscles. Seven layers of your muscles cut open. You can imagine the impact it has on your back all round. But because of lack of knowledge, we are not aware that we really need to have physio after. Just like someone who breaks their leg or has a major surgery that causes some muscular discomfort on their body, they go for physio to activate that part, to bring it back to normal. You also need physiotherapy as your body goes through changes in pregnancy and afterwards. So that has made my journey bearable. Then... um. When it comes to my mental health, I feel like uh, it's been better this second round because I'm 
more aware. Yes, I've struggled with anxiety, but I've had the opportunity to also see a therapist who's been able to help me navigate. And also because I've managed expectations, letting go of control where especially you can't control. I mean, pregnancy is one of God's mind-blowing journey. You can't really control what's happening in your body. So mentally, I've been in a better space than the first time where I was like, what the hell is happening? Why am I sick? Why am I not like other pregnant women? Why do I keep falling sick? I've been better. So I'm handling, so I'm handling the changes that are coming at me with more grace. Yes. Spiritually, I've been also calm this time with the pregnancy number two. Um, I've mentioned that I was really anxiety ridden when it came to both pregnancies, but I feel like I was pregnant during COVID. We never had church. <laughs> we never had a lot of support as pregnant, pregnant women that we could have been accorded at that time because of a pandemic. But now I've been able to go to church. Um, I found a church that I liked. There are so many things that we took for granted. And COVID moms know now that you're pregnant this time, that someone can visit you, that you can go to church. Those little things, ah, they really did so much damage to our mental health. So I'm really glad that I'm at a better space spiritually this time. I've been able to journal a little bit, though I'm not a journaling person, but I've been able to stay connected. In both pregnancies I did, but this is just better because I can go to church when I really want to. Then I would say that uh, in both pregnancies, my skin has not had issues, which at least I do not look like my problems. <laughs> So it, it's one of the pros that I have come uh, have come with the pregnancies. Um, one thing for sure is that I get really dark, especially my neck, hyperpigmentation towards the end. And it's something I don't fight. I've just embraced. We'll work on it later. So embracing the journey is, is a really key point when it comes to dealing with the challenges you face. Then... Pregnancy with a toddler is definitely a different ball game. That is my pregnancy number two. I've, the first child is here. You'll never ever again be pregnant and not have a baby with you <laughs> like the first time. So it is challenging because motherhood, you just don't switch off any time. So there are times that you want to rest, you want to switch off, you can't. So I've had moments where I'm extremely tired because I, I'm still a mom, but I have to keep going. I have to keep pushing my, myself, especially when he needs my attention. But I've also had to call for help when I need to. He goes to his grandma. Sometimes my nanny decide, decides to stay back a little bit longer. Those have made it uh, bearable. Though also the toddler is very understanding. It's just that they also regress when they sense a baby is coming. So there are times he needs me more <laughs> than he would have. So pregnancy with a toddler is it's very humbling. It's very humbling. It's different, very different. So if you are pregnant the first time and you have the luxury of not taking care of someone else who's a baby, um, I would say embrace those moments because they'll go forever now. Yeah. Then marriage-wise, I feel like I've had more grace, more understanding in this. We've had more grace towards each other. We've been more understanding in the second pregnancy than in the first. And it still stems from the fact that we were clueless. We were all like, what the hell is happening <laughs> in the first round? But this time, because we understand the journey better, there's been more grace towards each other. And also bearing in mind that with pregnancy number one, I got pregnant two years, uh, two months after the wedding, adjusting to marriage and then adjusting to pregnancy and then adjusting to COVID. That's a whole new thing. That's a whole journey there. So this time we've been more graceful with each other, more understanding. And 
I, I thank God for that. I really thank God for that. Like in the first one, I would be extremely irritated. It's not to say I'm not irritated, but it would be extremely irritating if someone ate meat around me. But now you learn that you can't really control everyone around you. So it's up to you to protect also your space. Yeah. Then I've had some struggles that have been similar, especially in the third and the second trimester. I've had nausea. I've had aversions. Um, I've had hemorrhoids. I've had gastritis. I feel like they were worse in the first pregnancy but they have also recurred in this pregnancy, but I've been better informed. I think I've spoken in my first episode about trying homeopathy to seek relief, especially with gastritis. So unlike the first one where I was on lots and lots of Gaviscon and Relsa, those antiacids, this time I haven't been on antiacids at all. I thank God just because I tried homeopathy, which is an alternative medicine. Um, it's it's really been helpful. It's really been helpful. But I've had similar struggles in both pregnancies. Just how I've handled them is different in both pregnancies. I don't know if I've had similar cravings. In as much as bread is concerned, I have to still eat bread, which was similar in my first one. I could not stand chicken in my first pregnancy at all. Now I can eat chicken. In fact, I want only chicken, kenyeji and ugali. The things I could not stand. I could eat a lot of rice and cereals in my first pregnancy. I can't eat them right now. I cannot. I don't even want to try any cereals, kamandi, ndengu. No, I just don't like them. But both pregnancies have craved bread and tea. Yeah, and now this time plus sausage. <laughs> it's really fun. It's weird. It's cravings are just weird. But I'd rather have cravings than aversions. I've also struggled with nasal congestion and sinuses in both pregnancies. Um, it's just the difference. This time I have been able to also use homeopathy and alternative medicine to handle. I remember when my sinuses got really worse, I had a consultation with a homeopath. I've talked about her before. She's um, a homeopath who specializes in reproductive health. So we do virtual consultations because she's based in Pakistan. So this time I was able to do a consultation in my second trimester. Whatever remedies she recommended became manageable, way manageable. So I've not had to take antihistamines throughout the pregnancy like I did with the first time that that has really made a lot of change with this journey then i feel like i'm better prepared with this pregnancy mentally than with my first so with my first everything is new you're learning about hiring nannies you don't know where to start you don't know what to ask. But because I've gained experience, I've had nanny conversations that I need to have in preparation for the next baby. I've had also, like, I'm cautious of what postpartum depression can do. Um, I'm trying to put systems in place to assist me before the baby comes. Like, my mind is at a better mindset it might all still be new because now I have pregnancy with a toddler, but it's it's better in terms of what motherhood entails. I know there will be new aspects in there. I've read books. I've had a community that informs me, and I know everyone's journey is different, but I feel like this time I'm better prepared than the first time where I was clueless and on survival mode because of how difficult it was. So I'd say those are the biggest differences when it comes to both pregnancies. Is it easy? No. Is it easier physically? No. Other aspects may be more manageable just because you, you have, you're managing your expectations. Yes. So I hope this answers the question to anyone who's been wondering what it feels like 
number one, number two. <laughs> and then you'll never ever be a hundred percent ready at now. I'm a hundred percent ready to add a baby. Maybe that's what I forgot. It wasn't as automatic conceiving the second time round as it was the first time. It took so long. I even forgot about it and closed that chapter and gave out clothes. So it's been a journey. It's been a humbling journey. It's been good and bad, but I have learned to surrender and manage expectations. And I'm just glad that we are coming to an end and we've reached this far. I hope you have enjoyed this episode. It's the best time to share pregnancy content. Uh, if you have any question, leave it in the comments. Um, I'll get right back to you. But I hope this answers um, those who are curious how both journeys have been or if you are one who's planning on embarking on a second round <laughs> and you're wondering how that would be compared to your first, I hope it gives you some perspective of how things are. So thank you so much for listening. Thank you for watching, wherever you're watching this from. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Leave me a comment, subscribe, and share this podcast with whoever would need to listen to it. Until next time, bye-bye.